I'm always uh, thrilled to be here. I was here just recently on Christmas, and uh, here I'm uh, here again. And I'm glad to be in March already, even though time, the way time is moving so fast, it terrifies me because our life quickly uh, moves on and we have to do things for the Lord. But I'm glad for the March because the winter runs away when the March comes. I guess they don't get alone. <laughs> I think even you uh, here had some snow, right? So it was a test. This winter, uh, it's not a global warming. It looks like it's a global cooling. And, um, but praise God for March, and it's a new beginning, it's a spring, spring, and uh, I know that a lot of things God will do in our lives and in our churches this year, so we have to just simply trust and believe that God has much more for us. Uh, this morning I wanted to speak to you and share a word about voice of the Lord in our lives, how important in our lives to have the voice of the Lord, and what can we do to hear the voice of the Lord? And uh, can we change certain things in our life to do the voice of the Lord? Uh, from the beginning, I wanted to say that the voice of God is not only for pastors and for prophets. The voice of God for every believer. Because if you're a believer, you're a child of God. And God wants to talk to you and me. And His desire and His heart is to speak to His children. Jesus said, my sheep, they know my voice. And they follow me. Where We are His children. And the same way we want to, to speak to our children, the same way God wants to speak to us. And we never look for moments to be quiet as parents. We always look for opportunities to speak to our children. And it doesn't matter what we do. It's the relationship, it's the love, it's the connection that, that makes us one. And God has a heart and God has a desire for His people to be close to Him. But I wanted to read to you uh, one scripture from the Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, where the humanity has lost the voice of God. Originally, initially, God began to speak to His people. Every morning He would come and would speak to Adam and Eve. And it was a beautiful story. It was an incredible relationship that I'm sure even the uh, no words can express what was happening on this earth when God created the heaven and earth. It was a beautiful thing. But the devil, he was able to deceive the humans. He was able to uh, bring lies into their ears. And they listened to him, and they agreed with him, and they disobeyed God. So chapter 3, you can open with me, or if you have it on screen, you don't have to open it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord. Some of the translations, they say, voice of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the, of the garden. But the Lord God called to man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in a garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. It's a tragedy. The Bible begins with the beautiful creation of God. But then the next thing what happens, the, uh, Adam and Eve, they disobey God. They disobey God actually for, for, for desiring to know more, for curiosity. The devil promised to them, as soon as they taste from the fruit, they will begin to be like gods. And they will know all of the things. And they will have incredible vision and, and, and understanding. But what, where actually the devil took them, he took them into the flesh. He took them into the natural. Now, natural, the flesh, it was only the expression on this earth, but it was not the purpose that God had for the humans to live in. God did not intend us to live in the flesh. He created us according to His image and His likeness. But the flesh, it was just the expression. It's just like you sit in your car and you don't, sell your, you don't call yourself a car. You don't think you're a car. You're simply in a car just to transport yourself somewhere where you wanted to go. So that's how flesh was for the humans in the beginning. But the inside, the essence of the person was the spirit. 
that God has created. So every morning, God would come to the garden and communicate with them. And it was a beautiful thing. And there is nothing more beautiful in our life, in our Christian life, than when we hear the voice of God. The comfort, the joy, the peace that the voice of God brings to our life could not be compared to anything in this life. Amen? And how we desire to hear the voice of God. And how we're hungry, how we're des desperate for the voice of God. And again, the voice of God is not only for prophets or for pastors. It's for all of us. Now, yes, there was times when God would speak only for, uh, God would speak to chosen people. Like Moses, like Daniel, like David. Because at that time, God was trying to, to do certain things to prepare for the new time, for the new covenant. And while God was speaking to Moses, but the desire of God was to speak to every individual. And what happens when you are not in a position to hear the Lord actually terrifies you. Because God is a spirit, and if the person is a flesh, then there is a disconnect. And Adam and Eve, they, had, they, they hid themselves in the trees and in the bushes. That's where the devil took them to. He took them just simply to be... Uh, in a present, in a flesh, in a natural, in a material world. And now we look, people may look today at this world and they say how beautiful it is. But imagine how beautiful the spiritual world. If the physical is the reflection of the spiritual, how much more beautiful the spiritual world is. And as believers, we know that everything that we see is a temporary. And this is not our purpose. And this is not our desires, cars, houses, uh, suits, and things of that nature, even gold. What is it? It's nothing. It's nothing. It's just something that God gave us. But the purpose of the humans and the purpose of his children is to have a relationship with the Lord. So we have to hear the voice of God in our life. Because otherwise we're confused. We're lost. We're desperate. We have no guidance. We have no purpose in life if we don't hear the voice of God. We're going to have to follow our own feelings and our own flesh. We're going to have to follow the crowds. We're going to have to follow the circumstances. If we don't have the voice of God in our life, and then we never grow up. We become, we stay the children. We stay attached to the elements of this world. The flesh, the sin, the demonic world controls the people. And that's why we see so much pain in life. So much destruction in life. Because people are directed and driven by flesh and by the human ambitions. But God has a desire for His people to hear His voice. And it's simple. There is no, nothing complicated about it. It's very simple. If you are a child of God, He wants to speak to you. And it's not you that you want to hear the Lord. No, He wants to speak to you more than you want to hear Him. So there is a simple couple of things that I wanted to share with you this morning that would help you hear the voice of God. First of all, it's important for us to desire to fulfill His will. Because if we don't want to follow or fulfill, fulfill His will, what is He going to tell us? If He will speak something to us, it is, it is His will for our lives. It is the purpose that He has for our lives. So in order for us to hear the voice of the Lord in our lives, deep in our hearts, we have to decide. And we have to make a decision that I want to fulfill your will. The reason Jesus Christ was hearing the voice of the Father when He was on this earth because he wanted to fulfill the will of the Father. And every morning, every night when he was going to bed, his only one thought was, Father, I want to fulfill your will. I want to glorify your name. I want to bring your kingdom on this earth. So from the morning to evening, his desire was to fulfill the will of the Father. That's why Jesus not even had to pray that the Father would speak to him. Jesus went places and the Father spoke. And there was three occasions when the Father spoke from the heaven out loud. That even the people, uh, people heard it. They were thinking, oh, it's a problem of thunder. Or some kind of natural occasion that is happening right now. But the Father said, this is my son that I have loved. And I have, I have pleasure in him. Listen to what he says. Follow him. So when you have a voice of God in your life, he will not only direct you, but He will bless you. He will put people around you. He will do things that you can't do on your own. The voice of the Father will lead you through this life and use you for His glory. So 
our prayer and our desire has to be to fulfill the will of the Lord. The, 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 just to live for the will of God. And it's not doesn't mean that we shouldn't work or we shouldn't desire certain things in our life or we shouldn't dream certain things. Yes, we can. But our deepest and the strongest desire has to be His will. Above anything in this life, above getting married, above getting your career, above anything in this life, the most important number one has to be the will of the Father. And then, if we seek the kingdom of God, the rest of the things shall follow us. Because He will give us not only what we do or not only what we want, but even above what we ask or we think, He will give us and He will bless us. But the most important one, we desire to fulfill the will of the Father, He begins to speak to us. We become part of His team. We become part of His kingdom. And we are not a little person that nobody knows or nobody sees. If nobody knows you, nobody sees you, He knows you. And He sees you. And at the times when you're lonely, it's just a lie. Because the Father is speaking to you. He is releasing His will into your life. Just desire His will more than anything else in this life. And you will see what will happen in your life. Amen? Amen. Second thing, we have to find a way how to separate from the worries and concerns and from the troubles of this life. Because if our heart and our mind is captured and held captive by the things that are happening around us, and there is always something happening around us, either a car accident or a doctor's diagnosis or a problem with the kids or the problem with the co-workers or a problem with the bills, not enough money or too much money, don't know how to spend it. There is always troubles in our life. In fact, Jesus said, you will have troubles in your life. And a lot of times people come to God hoping and thinking, maybe now my life will be easy, no problems. That's not the purpose of life. The purpose of life is to fulfill the will of the Father. And if you are on this earth, then that means that there is a position against the will of the Father. You will be opposed. You will be hated. You will be uh, fought against. So all of the things that surround us, they're not only surround us, they're deep in our hearts. Now, if you have a problem with your marriage or your kids, it worries you. You can't fall asleep. You can't even wake up in the morning. You wanted to stay in bed and never come out of the bed because there's so many things in this life. But we have to find a way how to disconnect ourselves from all of that, from all of the concerns and the issues, because then we can't hear the Lord. The Lord speaks into our spirit. He speaks into our heart. And that place has to be protected. That's why in Proverbs, I think, or Ecclesiastic, it says, more than anything else, protect your heart or guard your heart. Because heart is the place where God speaks. We need to protect our hearts from all of the issues of this life. And some people are more emotional, some people are less emotional. You know, women are generally more emotional. If things happen, they get concerned more. They cry more. Men usually get angry. They get logical. They, what is this happening? What can I do? What can I change? So, but overall, we all get concerned. And there's no person on this life that is not bothered or concerned. We all do, but we have to find a way how to disconnect from all of this to hear the Lord. I like how one, one, of my friend, uh, one friend of mine, pastor, he said that God told him one time, come to me after one hour of prayer. Come to me after one hour of prayer. Sometimes it takes one hour just to come to the Lord. And it's not that the Lord is so far or so distant or he's so spiritual that he doesn't want to hear you. No, it's that we are so deep in the flesh. That we're so deep into the worries and concerns and the troubles of this world. Oh, how I don't like to be in the flesh. How I don't, I don't like to be attached to the material world. How it keeps us down. How it, it, it's anchor, it anchors us down. And we can't pull our legs and we cannot pull our feet away from it. But there is a way for us. It's called the presence of God. If we only can find the presence of God, then everything doesn't bother us. You know, two years ago, my mom passed away. And uh, we all came into the house, and she was laying on the floor in the kitchen. 
And when things like that happen in life, it changes you. It, it touches you drastically and dramatically. Because suddenly, all of my bills and all of my problems, they didn't matter to me anymore. It's like you get disconnected from all of this. Just because it was so dramatic. I lost my favorite person in, in, this, in this world, my mom. With the loss of my mom, it seems like I lost concern and the, anything didn't matter to me anymore. So we sat there for three days in the house with all of my brothers and sisters just, you know, talking and looking at each other. There was, you know, projects I needed to do and there was uh, things that I needed to take care of, but it, they didn't, did not bother me anymore. Now, that's only a drastic experience that touched me and disconnected me from the uh, troubles. Now, imagine how much more we could get disconnected from this world if we are in the Lord. Now, in America today, we have a very famous, a lot of people, they go into meditation, into yoga classes. And, um, and while it's working a little bit, it allows people to meditate and to focus that they are disconnected from the things. But the problem is that they're never connected to the positive. They only disconnect themselves from the negative. And as soon as, as soon as they walk out of the door, they have a bill to pay for the yoga class. And they're back with the troubles. And then they are back in a yoga class to meditate, to try to disconnect from, oh, you know, problems and the issues. And they sit there and they stare into one spot. But they come out of the yoga class, they're back to the problems. But we Christians, we believers, we are children of God. Not only we can disconnect from the problems and the issues of the life, we can connect with the Lord. And that's why the Bible says, in Him we have everything. Amen. With Him we already have everything. In Christ we are seated in heavenly places. In Christ, with Christ, we have everything that is needed for us. So as soon as we are in Him, then everything is taken care of. That's why Jesus was so amazed. How come people are so concerned and they think what to be, what they're going to eat tomorrow and what they're going to be dressed in tomorrow? Who cares? And Jesus was looking at them. He could not believe his eyes. Why are you so worried? Don't be so worried like the, the Gentiles. Just trust your father. So he was teaching them to disconnect from the problems of this life. Amen. It's important. It's very important for us to do. I believe we don't die from age. I believe we die from troubles and from concerns. God created us to be eternal. He created us to live forever. So if we can take care of ourselves by not worrying about the problems, even though we have to die because it's kind of a rule on this earth, but we will die old and healthy. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? The strokes, the heart attacks, the sugar diabetes, and all of the issues, it comes from the wooding. Not only it gives you physical issues and problems, it disconnects you from God. And at that time, the devil comes to you and says, God doesn't love you. God doesn't care about you. He doesn't have a plan for your life. Because he puts all of the issues in our head and our heart, and then we don't hear God. We open the Bible, and the, the Bible doesn't talk to us. And we don't want to go to the church because we, can, we cannot relate to those people. Because they're joyful, they're full of energy, full of power, and we're like, hmm, I'm so much down. They're different. There's something wrong with them. But in reality, we all have issues and problems. And Jesus said, can you add at least a little bit of uh, hide to yourself if you worry? No, you can't. There is nothing you could change by just simply worrying. But by worrying, we are attached. We are placed just where the devil wants us to be placed. In the problems, in the, in the worrying. Oh, what can I do? What can I change? God gave us power. We, if we can change something, we should change it. If we cannot change certain things, we should not worry about it. But we just have to hear the voice of God. Some of the things in this life, they will come to pass. But if we hear the voice of God, just like Daniel did, he has gone through so many different governments and so many attacks against his own life. But because the voice of God was in his life, not only he was killed, but through every circumstance and every problem, he was elevated even higher and higher and higher just because he was able to hear the voice of God. 
or how we need to hear the voice of God. Sometimes we need to thank the Lord for the problems. Because because of the problems, we actually are driven into prayer. The problems, they help us. Because when we have a good time, we have enough money. Let's see, where could, where could we go? Bahamas, no, we've been there. Mexico, we've been there. You know, when life is good, the last thing is in your mind is to pray. But when the life is difficult, that's when we go into the secret room. So thank God for the problems and the troubles. So when the devil attacks us and gives us problems, we should just say, Devil, I will use this into my own benefit. By trusting God, by believing Him, I will use this into my own benefit. And may God help us not to be fleshly, not to be of this world, not to be attached to the things that we have. If we lose certain, if we gain certain things, praise God. If we lose certain things, God gives, God takes it away. May His name be glorified in our life. God can give us more. But if we are worried, and concerned, then we are just like this world. In fact, then we are no different from this world if we worry. So my advice to you and myself is not to worry. Amen. The third thing we have to do, we have to develop a consistent, regular relationship with the Lord through prayer and through His Word. Because if we want to hear the voice of God in our life, we have to set Sometime aside just for that, preferably in the morning, preferably when our mind is relaxed and, and refreshed from the sleep, we have to wake up and go into the prayer room. Yeah, I know there would have been the 25th hour, because Lord, you have no idea how busy we are in this life. You see, you are, you know, you're okay in heaven. I gotta go to work. I gotta take kids to kindergarten. I've got, I've gotta cook dinner and lunch and, and breakfast. I'm busy, Lord. So we don't have time for the for for that. Even though we know we have to pray, we know we have to read the Bible. Well, we simply don't have time. But you know what? If we don't pray, if we don't read the Bible, we will not have time. We will not have time even for life, because before we wake up, the life is over. When the prayer. In the Word of God, it allows us to hear the voice of God. Now you might say, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Or I'm just a, you know, welder or a truck driver. I, you know, the pastor, he, I hope he's praying. But we all need to hear the voice of God. We all have questions today, isn't it? Do we have questions? I'm sure we at least have one, two, three questions in our life. I, if the Lord would appear to you right now physically, would you ask him a couple of questions? Lord, how about this? How about my future? How about my kids? The Lord is here, present in our life. Why don't we ask him? Oh, but um, I don't even know what to say. And sometimes in prayer, during the prayer, we're not even comfortable. We don't know how to act. We don't know how to pray. We don't know what to say. And we look around, they're like, oh, they're all crazy. You know, the way they, why are they screaming? Oh, why is she crying? It doesn't matter. In fact, the purpose of prayer is not even prayer. The purpose of the prayer is the presence of God. So that's what the purpose of the prayer. People have elevated prayer too high, sometimes even above God himself. What is the purpose of the prayer? If we think about prayer, if we talk about prayer, if we teach about prayer, well, we never go higher than the prayer. It's like you have freeways, over, freeway and roads everywhere, but you have no cities to go to. You just drive around, you know. <laughs> I'm driving around all of my life, but I never get into some place. <laughs> Same thing with the prayer. Prayer, it's a road into the presence of God. The Word of God, it's His will and His desires for our life. And if we want to hear the voice of God, and it's not for the sake of being spiritual. Oh, God speaks to me. I'm so spiritual. I have, I'm so gifted in the spirit. No, the voice of God in your life because you're a child of God. So the purpose to hear the voice of God is so he would lead us, so he would direct us through life, so we would not be lost. One time David, in, his, in the longest uh, chapter in the Bible, chapter 119, at the last verse, he said, I, have, I am lost like a sheep. Deliver me, O Lord. He was a king. He was a spiritual man, but in life sometimes we feel like we're lost, we're desperate, we're so empty inside, we're so dissatisfied with life. It's a good place to be if you will do the next thing, 
turn to the prayer and the word of God. And the, the dissatisfaction will disappear. The, the feeling that you are lost and disappointed will disappear. Because the Bible in the, in the prayer will give you life. It will refresh your mind. It will ref refresh your future. It will bring your dreams back into your life. Prayer in the Word of God will change your life. And God wants to watch us. He sees how we honor His Word. If you want to hear the voice of God, honor His Word. If you think you're so spiritual and you don't touch the Bible for a week or two weeks, you're not spiritual. Oh, you know... People, they're sometimes ch chasing prophecies or they run after conferences. Oh, I want to hear you, God. Well, he's speaking to you all the time, but you don't hear him. The best way to hear God is in the prayer with the word of God, because he's already talking. As soon as you open the Bible, he's talking. Just simple, have to disconnect yourself, focus yourself, and he's talking. And just have an attitude that, Lord, you're talking right now. You know what? I cannot pray to God anymore. Say, Lord, speak to me. I can't, because he's actually speaking to me all the time. So now my prayer is, Lord, help me hear your voice in my spirit. Lord, help me receive your word, because I'm so bound up by all of the issues and by all of the things that surround me. Because God speaks to, all, to us all the time. What? God speaks to me, even to me. I, you know, I'm a bad person or I'm a sinner. Yes, he speaks to you. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock on the door. If anyone can hear me and open the door, I will enter and I will have a fellowship with you. He knocks on our doors. He constantly wants to talk to us. So we simply have to open our mind and open our heart. Lord, I want to hear you. But it starts with fixing our thoughts and our desires to fulfill the will of God in our life. Amen. Amen. So prayer in the word of God. That's why sometimes prayer is boring to us. That's why Bible sometimes doesn't make sense to us. Because we don't see it as a way of God speaking to us. Oh, it's just, you know, what does it have to do with my life? Moses, Daniel, David, Joseph. Hey, you know, why, why should I read this? But just like God spoke to them and God worked in their life, He wants to work in your life also. And in fact, by watching the pattern how God worked with people, we can watch the pattern of His work in our life. And we can learn a lot through that. And a lot of the mistakes that they have made, we won't have to make. Because we watch the pattern of their life. Isn't it? Wouldn't that be nice to see a mistake coming and you don't do it because, just because you've seen it al already? And we're no different from the rest of the people before us. We might think we know much better or we're better. No, we're not. We're, we're good and we're better when we have nothing. But give us authority, give us money, give us fame, and we'll see what's going to happen to us. You know, Christians are very humble when they have nothing. <laughs> but when they have everything, they begin to... They, what's, what's humble? What's the definition of humble? Can you look it up? <laughs> okay, so may God give us grace that we would desire His Word. Amen. And we would desire the time in prayer. It's not a last time. The only time I did not lose in my life is the time of prayer in my life. The rest of it, it's a waste of time. Even work. What do we work for? To spend the money? Everything is a waste of life except the prayer. I look back into my life and I remember the moments when I prayed at night or during the days or when I separated myself. That time is invested into the future. That time is invested into the eternity. So if you want to look for investments today, the best investment is a prayer. Even better than gold or, in, or silver. If you can invest some time, invest it into the prayer, into the Word of God. And that will change your life. And when God sees you, that you're before Him, that you're spending time in the prayer and with the Word, He will begin to honor you with His voice. The reason Jesus was honored in the front of the people because he honored the Father. If we can honor God in our prayer with the word of God, he will honor us by beginning to speak to us. And it's an honor to hear the voice of God in our life. Oh, if we have a voice of God in our life, we're different people. We're not concerned anymore. We're not driven by the circumstances anymore. We're somebody that knows where they're going. And that is a blessing in this life to know where you are going. Not to live just by 
by the, the winds of this life. Oh, if the wind pushing, you know how the ships back in the old days, they, they would have a sails. And if the wind is pushing that way, but they need to go that way, they can't. So what do they do? They have to go with the wind and then hope that the wind will turn around and bring them to the place where they need to go. And that's why they traveled for a long time back in the day. But today we have engines. You know, we can steer the ships into the right direction. And that's how the voice of God in our life. But this life in general, floating with the wind, most likely you will not get to the place where you want to go. Because the life always on this earth works again against the will of the Father in our life. And number four, we have to realize the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That is so important. And He is in our life Always, even when we are working, even when we are sleeping, we have to realize that the presence of the Holy Spirit is in our lives. Because usually we focus our attention on God when we come to prayer meetings or to church or when we open the Bible. But the Holy Spirit wants us to change that attitude, not to view Him just like, oh, I need you, I need you, please come Holy Spirit, I came, now I need your touch, I need your presence. He's like, I've been with you all week long. Where you've been. So by realizing and by being aware of the Holy Spirit, His presence in our life all the time and every day, that will help hear the voice of God. Because Father revealed Himself to the people in the Old Testament through the law. Father God, He revealed Himself to the people. Then He, he sent His Jesus Son to the humanity to reveal Himself through the Son. Now, now the Father God reveals Himself through the Spirit. So now we have an earth present, God the Holy Spirit with us. He is here with us all the time, whether you, we feel Him or we don't feel. And sadly, in the Christianity, sometimes we have brought the, the knowledge or understanding of God if we feel Him. That's very mature, that's very childish. Oh, I have goosebumps on my skin or my hair is rising up. That means the presence of God is in this place. He is in your life all the time and in my life. So instead of Asking, Holy Spirit, please come into my life. We should say, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are in my life. I thank you that every day, every moment you are in my life, please begin to open my heart and open my mind that I would hear the voice of God in my life. I, uh, I really like the book of Benihim, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. He brings the Holy Spirit in a way that many people did not bring Him before. Holy Spirit is here to assist us that we would come to knowledge and understanding of Jesus Christ, that we would understand the Word of God and the will of God in our lives. So He is here to assist us. He is comforter. He is our teacher. He will remind, He will speak to us everything that the Father has said before. And as, as flesh, we cannot everything, we cannot comprehend everything at, at once. So it takes time in life. That's why the Bible says, Enoch, walk with God. It takes time. You cannot do understand God in one step of your life. It takes the whole life to understand the plan of God for your life. And sometimes we watch others and we view other ministries and we say, Lord, I want that right now. I always smile when I hear people, I want the anointing of T.J. Jake or T.B. Joshua or I want that kind of anointing. But it takes a lifetime of walk with God to have that anointing. We cannot have somebody's anointing that would be unfair they have paid the price all with all of their life and we'll simply what's your secret what's your key can i have it but but god is not a respecter of the persons he will give you everything that you desire in fact most of your desires or all of your desires about god from him he gives us the desires. It's not that this flesh that desires to do good. It's Him in us that gives the desires. And the Holy Spirit interprets our life to us. That's why people in this world are so confused. They cannot explain things. They say, oh, if there's so much evil, there's no God. That's how they logically conclude things about this life. But that's a wrong con conclusion. Maybe it's different. Maybe... God gave the, uh, the uh, earth to the humans, and they have messed it up. And by His mercy, by His love, He gives us time to do certain things. And only with the voice of God, we can come out of the mess of life. We can be victorious. We can have vision for life only with the voice of God. 
And sometimes it's important not to move if God doesn't speak. Amen. We have to close ourselves away. I don't know what to do. Sometimes the, the life demands our immediate actions immediately. But we don't know what to do. But here in America, I see so many people move around the, the nation, even the world. Oh, they just, you know, they rent a truck and they're down out, out of sight of the America. Why did you move? I don't know. You see, that's confusion. You can't just move. You can't just share and change your church just like that. You can't do things like that because your life depends on Him. So, yeah, I'm not saying we should ask the Holy Spirit what to eat in the morning. You know, but when it comes to life-changing decisions, they have to come from Him. Or at least being advised from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what can I do in this situation? What can I change in this situation? Now, sometimes God is silent. And sometimes God, when God is silent, He's speaking some things in our life too. And we want His voice sometimes to tell us yes or no. But it doesn't happen that, that way all the time. Oh, how frustrating it is when that happens. But God teaches us to trust Him. God teaches us to wait upon His name, up, upon His presence. God teaches us how to, how to allow Himself to work in our lives. So we don't have to hustle Him in our life. But we would allow ourselves to be directed by Him. So if God is silent, just say, Lord, I don't know what to do right now. I will just simply wait and trust on You, Lord. Because I know You are my provider. You are my life. You are my everything. A practical advice that I could give you is to, in order for us to hear the voice of God, we have to pray with questions. So prayer is not an emotional dumpster for us. When we come and we just dump everything on the Lord, like uh, we cry, we run out of tissues, even though sometimes we have to cry, even though sometimes we have to scream, we have to cry out. But in prayer, we should learn how to ask questions. So instead of, ay, 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 God knows you're His child. He knows much more about you than you know about yourself. But it's important to come in prayer and say, Lord, what can you say about this issue and this situation right now, Lord? Lord, what can I do in this situation? Please speak to me. Or Lord, what would you say about the actions that are happening nowadays? And what could I be doing different? So we have to, be, to begin to pray like there is God. It shouldn't be like, like a blind prayer. Pray with the attitude that God hears you and ask questions. But don't get disappointed if God is quiet. Because what seems like a one hour to you, it's nothing for the eternity. I've been praying for two hours or for two days. By now, God should have, have come down to me because I'm so spiritual. What is two days for God? And sometimes when God is quiet, He wants to change us. He wants to mold us. He wants to break us. And sometimes the prayer is the place of change. Sometimes the prayer is the place of uh, humility when God humbles us and, and, and begins to speak to us. Like, just like um, Elijah, he came on a mountain and he wanted to just tell God how bad everything was. And God says, relax. I just wanted to do certain things in your life and go appoint a prophet, go appoint a king. And this is what's going to happen in the future. So when we pray, we have to just use that as a time when we come before the Lord. And that's a valuable time. It's a privilege, God, to come before you. It's an honor, Lord, to know you. I'm so thankful that you are in my life. And when we come into the prayer like this, then God will begin to look at us and we are grown. We become mature and he begins to speak to us. Some of the things God will not speak to us because certain things are hidden for certain uh, times. Uh, as humans, we sometimes we're curious and we think that is spirituality. Sometimes it's just simply curiosity. So if we know, if we want to know much more than we should know, sometimes God won't simply tell us. Or sometimes, you know, like Daniel in um, um, Revelation, God said, uh, seal that because that is for later times. Seal that because that is for not now. As humans, we view life through our own lives through the generation of our own lives. But God had much more generations before us and after us. So the things, the prophecies, and the Word of God is given for the life. 
But not only for our life, but for the life of the earth, for the spin of the life. So if we can do our part, and if we can allow the voice of God, we will be placed just like where just like where we're supposed to be, and we will do just like what we need to do. And there is no confusion. There is no waste of time. Jesus fulfilled the will of the Father in 33 years. He did not need to live for 90 years because he never made mistakes. Notice, Jesus was never afraid. Never anywhere it says in the Bible that Jesus was scared for his life or afraid because of the voice of God allowed him to trust the Father and just to every day to make it just like the Father wants it to be. And then there is no mistake, there is no confusion, and there is no fear in life. Oh, that is a life. Not to have fear, not to have confusion, and not to make mistakes. That is a life I want to live. And it is possible to live that, that, to live that life if we have the voice of God in our hearts, in our lives. Then we will not have fear. Then we will not make mistakes. And even if we make mistakes, they will not destroy us. But they will humble us and at the same time raise us up because we humble ourselves before the Lord. So my prayer, my desire in my life, Lord, I want to hear your voice all the time in my life. There's so many voices in our life, church. Especially now in, a, in, a area of, uh, in an era of media and social media and and believe me, the Silicon Valley is coming up with much more things to keep us occupied. They're just working really hard at that because that's their living. If they don't make new things, then they will go broke financially. So they have to make new things. But the new things, they occupy our attention. They take our attention away from God. And besides of that is the flesh that we have to battle. And besides of that is the issues of every day that we have to face. But with God, everything is possible. Like the devil says, you put me up on a mountain. I feel like you surround me. I am in your presence on the time. Oh, the voice of God. The voice of God. How important it is in our life. Sometimes it's more important than the praises of your friends. Sometimes it's more important than anything, than the diplomas or the things that we can achieve in this life. If we can achieve to hear the voice of God in our life, the rest of the things, they don't matter. And if they come, they will only add into our lives. You know, studying the Bible, sometimes we, have, uh, we can see how the things, how people that wanted certain things that were not for them, actually damaged their lives, not benefited their lives. So sometimes we desire so much in our life. We want to buy 100 acres and, uh, and something else. And we want to be there to you. And we want to go places. And all of that, it takes us and it splits us apart. But the voice of God, it makes you a real person, just like who you are. You're a son and a daughter of God. And when we hear the voice of God, we look into the mirror and we know who we are. We don't hate ourselves. We don't see, oh, I can't believe people love me. No, but when God speaks to us, we are a real person. Because usually we are a product of the, of the society or we're the product of the family that we grew up. But when we hear the voice of God, we are children of God. Because the Bible says that if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are a son of God and you are a daughter of God. May God bless you. May God bless your ministry, your church, everything that you do. And may He give you and grant you grace so that you would hear His voice all the time in your life.